I'm Stephen Ellis, Director of Interventional Cardiology here at the Cleveland Clinic, and we'll be discussing a very important study that was presented recently at the American Heart Association called the Ischemia Trial. Why is it important? It's important because it's relevant to a large number of patients that we see and treat, and it provides the most contemporary data to help us understand how best to manage these patients. Who are the patients? These are patients that have stable angina. So that means they have symptoms, but they're not progressive. They're not at rest. They're basically fairly mild symptoms, but they do have angina. And to get into the study, the patients had to have ischemia by stress testing, either nuclear stress testing, stress echo, or even some patients had stress testing with only ECG monitoring. They also had to have a CT scan showing they didn't have critical disease and they didn't have no disease at all. And they were compared or randomized with their permission to either what we call optimal medical therapy, where that means statins if the, if the cholesterol is high, aspirin, and a variety of, of other treatments, optimal medical therapy alone, or in combination with what we call revascularization, which in three quarters of the patients was angioplasty and a quarter of the patients was bypass surgery. To get into the details a little bit of more of who these patients are, um, three quarters were male, 40% had diabetes, two thirds were white, most of the rest of the patients were Asian. And the reason for that is the study had some difficulty recruiting and so they went to China to finish the study. 20% of them had a prior heart attack. Importantly, the angina was relatively mild. Most of these patients had angina one or three times a month, not even a week. Some had it weekly. Some had not had angina for more than a month or so. So it was patients with stable and relatively mild disease. The study outcome or the major scientific question to be answered is, did revascularization, either with angioplasty or bypass surgery, did it reduce the risk of heart attack, myocardial infarction, or some other bad endpoints such as admission into the hospital and the like? A secondary endpoint was what it did to the patient's symptoms. And the bottom line is, although there's some nuance here, for the most part, the primary outcome of death, myocardial infarction, and revascularization or getting patients into the hospital was no different. So that's an important finding. It has ramifications, which I'll talk about in a minute. Importantly, also, those patients that had fairly severe angina were better with revascularization. And that really is the take-home, and it substantiates what we knew before. So the findings actually are not terribly surprising, but they're from a large study that's contemporary, so it's important. So the take-home message for patients like this is, if symptoms are bad, angioplasty or surgery can improve your symptoms without much excess risk of death or heart attack. On the other hand, if you have blockages and you have an abnormal stress test but you don't have much in the way of symptoms, there's no driving compelling reason to go ahead with bypass surgery or angioplasty at this point. You can wait and see and see how you do over the, over the long haul. So those are really the take home messages. It's an important study. Uh, there are some unanswered questions at this point. For instance, the patients that got angioplasty um, have not been presented separately from those that got bypass surgery, but I, I don't think the message is going to change. Bottom line is optimal medical therapy is really important, and if you have symptoms, then you should be considering these other forms of treatment. But if you don't have much in the way of symptoms, if you're not terribly troubled, there's no compelling reason to go forward with a more invasive approach.